Hello and welcome to ITC TechShare. I'm Tom Grissom. Today I would like to further explore the document camera and the versatility and many uses it has within a classroom. So to begin with, yesterday I gave an example of just simply placing a document onto the document camera. Let's just zoom out here just a bit. And this is the traditional use. Document cameras have been around for decades. And I think every teacher will find a use for a document camera, whether you're English, uh, science, math, PE. I think every subject area will find a use uh, for just the traditional document camera. I, however, like to use it for three-dimensional items. Any item that you can place on the document camera safely. Let's just do an example here. Let's say that we're doing a science unit on plants and farming and we're going to look at an ear of corn. Uh, so I can just simply place that three-dimensional object onto the document table. And let me just zoom in here just a bit. And you can very easily draw the student's attention to whatever it is that you want them to pay attention to. In this case, I could either do it here in front of the document camera or come up and point to whatever it is that I want to draw the student's eye to. In this case, if you'll notice, there's indentations on each one of these grains of corn. And that's one way that farmers uh, decide whether it's time for harvest or not. It's called denting. Um, so you can very easily, and then the other benefit of document cameras, if students ask questions on the fly, you can easily adapt. So let's just take a quick cross section. So let's take a look and you can see the actual corn cob itself um, there very easily. So you can adapt and flow the lesson to whatever the student's needs are and the questions that may arise. Now perhaps a more unconventional use that we're using more and more and finding more value. Many of our students are coming with tablets and phones. So we could connect a tablet or a phone using a VGA connector or if we have an HDMI projector, but that requires special adapters. And here's just a few examples. Let me just zoom back out. So each one of these adapters costs $20, $30, $40, and that becomes impractical to provide the proper adapter for each device. So we're using an alternative method. We can just simply place whatever the device is, in this case here, let me just place this Windows 8 tablet. So we can go in, choose whatever app it is that we want to use, and the students can see it displayed up on the large screen in the front of the room. No adapter necessary. It doesn't look 100% as good as it would with a direct connection, but it's certainly passable. So here's an iPad. So let me just come down here. So we want to look at a particular app for an iPad. We can go through here, select whatever app it is. So that's very easy to do, very quick to adapt. We're not fumbling around with different adapters and you know changing, changing the different switches on the switch box. Many of us have a mobile phone with us during our waking hours. It's very convenient. So let's say that we're out on a field trip and a teacher or a student has taken some pictures that they would like to share with the class. I can just simply place my mobile phone in this case. And then I can do the telephoto zoom. So I can zoom in here. This is the switch box that we talked about earlier in a previous video. So I can very quickly come out and share this. Let me do a pinch and zoom, zoom in on that just a little bit. So once again, it becomes very easy for you as the teacher to draw the student's eye to whatever the particular lesson is. So that's just a few tips, some learning flows out there for using the document camera. It's a very versatile device, very useful in the classroom. So I hope you explore some of those new uses. Until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning.